hand of God, the hand that is unchanging. Uh, the audio team came to me before we got going this morning, okay? said that they uh, didn't, didn't get a chance to load the slides for the song leader and his songs this morning. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, that's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because I got an old school song leader in <laughs> Uh, learn how to 
to give somebody a compliment. Amen. Learn how to encourage somebody in spirit. Uh, seek out good words. What is it that I can say that would encourage somebody today? Now think on that every day of this year. Or what is it that I can say, what is it that I can do to encourage somebody, to lift somebody up? This year, we want to encourage you just every day and everything that you say and every time you have the opportunity to speak. But let it be something positive. Uh, even and especially when everybody else around is saying something negative. You be the person that speaks positive. Uh, the Bible tells us that the power of life and death is in your tongue. You don't know this, but there might be somebody in your presence. There might be somebody that you're meeting today. There might be somebody that has decided that I'm going to give it up. Yes. Or there might be somebody that's deciding today is the last day. But what, what could happen in an individual's life if you spoke positivity? Uh, you, you just don't know. You might be saving somebody's life today. And so, we, since we don't know, we should allow our speech to be something that encourages people. Uh, the, the, the term that is used here when the scripture speaks of exhortation is parakaleo. In the Greek it is parakaleo. And what it means is to call one to your side or to give somebody aid. Your words might be able to help somebody in a way that you cannot imagine. It means to entreat. And it also means to comfort. Have you ever been there before where you were down? Have you ever been in a place where you were low? And somebody, they didn't even know it, but they said something that encouraged you in such a way. They, they told you about something you did for them or something you said to them that encouraged them. And, and in, in turn, they now were encouraging you. And so we should try to find ways that we can encourage one another. It also means to admonish or to exhort, to push and help somebody along the way. Yeah. If I can help someone along the way, then my living will not be, be in vain. And that should always be our goal. And it also means to instruct and to teach. You see, because when I am encouraging somebody, there are some people who don't see a reason for going on. There's no, there are some people who don't see a reason for trying. But if I'm able to capture their imagination and capture their mind and capture their heart, I'm able to teach them and teach them what God is able to see and what God says about you and your life and your mission. So I love this term power kaleo because uh, uh, another form of the word is a paraclete, which means uh, the Bible, when the Bible speaks of a paraclete, it really talks about Jesus. It talks about we have an advocate with the Father. We have somebody that, that see, we, we need encouragement. We need help. We need some help along the way. And so what the Bible is saying is we have somebody speaking for us. We have somebody that's speaking on our behalf with the Father. So, so we should use words to encourage one another. And at the very least, God help us. We should always be praying for one another. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and we're going to need that this year. We're going to need that in our life. Somebody that, that is able to go to God on our behalf. Uh, but it starts with us. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. I love this text that the Bible speaks of David. And the Bible says that there was a time when, when David was greatly distressed. Uh -huh. and, there, and, and this is interesting because there are times when Do you realize this? He wasn't always happy. 
Their, their soul was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. They've lost their sons. They've lost their daughters. But then the scripture says, now then, David had to do something in, internally. David encouraged himself in the Lord of his God. Amen. David encouraged himself. So now, while we are encouraging you to learn to encourage somebody, we want to encourage you also, first you need to learn how to encourage yourself. Amen. 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 God help us. You need to work, make sure you're working on your self-esteem. Right. Amen. Amen. People kill me and always say, oh, he hurt myself. How he hurt your self-esteem? Amen. Your self-esteem start with, with self. It start with, with you. And so, now you
verse number 8, Romans 12 and 8, he goes on and says this, He that gives, yeah, let him do it with simplicity. Amen. And that's another encouragement for us. Ask him number 8. Learn how to give. Yeah. Amen. Learn how to give. Jesus says this, Jesus says that it is more blessed yes, to give on, than to receive. Man. Now, how do you feel about that? Good. Have, have you found that to be true for your life? Yes. Or can I be honest with you this morning and tell you that that is something I struggled with? I mean, I, I genuinely, I just, I didn't, I didn't get it. I, I'm reading this, I, I hear what you're saying, Jesus, but how is it better to give than to receive? Because I, I don't think if the more I get, the better off I can be. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. It's better to give than to receive. Yeah. I, I will say I used to struggle with that. I shared that with a church some years ago, and I had an old deacon that said, I think I can help you with that, preacher. And I say, uh, well, help me out. And he said, would you rather give a beating or receive one? <laughs> I said, well, since you put it that way, I think I can see it. I, I can understand it. <laughs> but Jesus is saying, listen, listen, reshape your thinking. And understand this, that, that the greater blessing is in giving yes. and not in receiving. Yes. Listen, you are, you are blessed even if God has put you in a position to be able to give. Yeah. That, therein is your blessing. Yeah. If you have it to give, yeah. then God is, has already yeah. blessed you immeasurably. immeasurably. Yeah. And I often tell people too, listen, don't miss the test. Come on. Don't, don't miss the test. Come on now. If God has given to you and put you in a position to give,
is hypnotes. It means it used to denote singleness, honesty yeah. in your aim, purity. God is saying when you give, you got to give it from your heart, but your heart has to be pure. Yes. Your aim has to be pure. Your intention when you give has to be right. right. Amen. 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 That's why it always gets me at the churches that we visit and they, well, this, the deacon board gave. Give me the slide. So it is 